Okay, um, so I feel like I'm doing an advertisement for Fast and Furious 7, which has just come out. Um, so we've been doing uh, work over the last couple of years on looking at uh, directed energy and scaling up from uh, some other programs to um, planetary defense. The best thing you can do if you're interested in this is look at our website. Um, so this is a uh, little plot of what's on our website now, which we have a, a PDC uh, mitigation scenario. So for the, uh, uh, the PDC parameters, we actually ran a numerical simulation of the orbital parameters given the um, directed energy work that I'll talk about in a moment. So you can take a look at it, including movies, and I'll play the movies for you as well. Uh, so some of our stuff ended up on the uh, covers of some magazines looking at what could you actually do with uh, uh, directed energy systems, which have come a long ways in the last few years, and uh, it's, it's good to understand what they're about. Okay, so again, if you're interested in papers, we have, uh, by the end of the year, we'll probably have close to 20 papers on this. So just check out our website, and you'll find them. Don't bother to memorize anything here, just go to the website. Okay, so the basic idea is you, um, it is now possible to build uh, large-scale directed energy systems. They are um, uh, combiners uh, in our system. We combine a relatively low power system, typically a kilowatt. Uh, each into very large, uh, up to many megawatts if needed. And the, the key is to be able to, to combine. So this is a phased array approach, although I'll show you a simpler approach just using uh, an, an element uh, a combiner. This allows you to do electronic focusing, beam steering, and uh, fast control. Uh, this is a simulation of the, uh, the beam. Uh, the beam, since it's electronically formed, can have uh, very high uh, strel ratios and can have a, a very good side lobe suppression. You can defocus, focus, you can move the beam around, dither, and it's uh, actually quite flexible. So there's several papers on this in our literature. I'm not gonna bore you with it, but you can take a look if you're interested. Uh, so this is currently the mission concept. It, it basically is an ARM class system, except we ripped off the um, IBD part, the ion beam deflection, and we put a, uh, an ablation uh, head on it. So it uses the ATK uh, solar panels, and ATK happens to be one mile from our campus. So they've looked at this, and I'll show you some of their uh, panel designs in a moment. Uh, basically, you can stand off up to about 100 kilometers away from the target if you need to and still form a potent spot uh, on the target. And I'll show you how well it works in a moment. Uh, this is a uh, current baseline design. Uh, fits into uh, uh, many launchers, including the upcoming SLS Block 1, uh, and it also fits into an Ariane 5 and actually some smaller launchers. It's not a very large system for modest uh, size asteroids, but even for uh, three to 500 meter class asteroids, it uh, is capable of a single launcher interdiction. I see these are two, uh, uh, two issues shown. Uh, one is a this one here is a phased array approach where all the beams are phased onto the target. This is the temperature, it gets up to roughly 2,500 Kelvin or so. Oops. And then this is the, um, oops, moving. Uh, this is an N element array, which same amount of power, just, uh, just distributed differently. They both have the same flux. This is a, a block one, um, deployment, which is capable of handling up to 450 kilowatts of electrical power. These are um, now going to be standard uh, ATK products. So these are up to 30 meter diameter solar panels, and they fit into a shroud of an, uh, an SLS, Block 1. Uh, these are launcher options, which are currently available, um, all the way up to a Block 2, but you don't even need a Block 2. A Block 1 will do it. So this is what a uh, a, uh, a 10 meter uh, class um, a photovoltaic array looks like uh, deployed, again, very close to our campus. Um, this is uh, about seven kilograms per kilowatt. So the uh, power densities are actually quite high. The laser amplifiers are currently at five kilograms per kilowatt. And uh, things are actually coming along very, very nicely here. Uh, anyway, these are the uh, launch scenarios in terms of mass. It's all on your memory stick. and. Don't bother to memorize it, but it does fit inside a, a single launcher. Okay, orbital deflection capability. This is for Apophis, so a large asteroid, 
uh, 300 plus meters in diameter with a relatively small unit. This is a, um, a 30 kilowatt laser array, which is small for us. Produces about two newtons of thrust. And there's a three curves here. This is a, a one delta curve. This is a three delta that people often use in approximations, which you can see didn't work all that well here. And then this is the numerical, numerical solution, uh, doing a th three body solution. So it takes of order um, 15 years or so, okay, uh, 15 years or so to deflect with this very small amount of power. And I'll show you in a moment, we can deflect much faster with larger powers. Okay, this is uh, deflection time in years versus, um, okay, we're gonna go to directed energy devices here, much more effective. This is deflection time in years, 10, 1, 0 1 year versus asteroid diameter versus class of the system from 50 kilowatts electrical up to 10 megawatts electrical. You can see you can deflect a, a 300 meter object in, in one year to you know, 10 years or so, depending on which system you choose. Uh, this is launch mass versus power. Here's a system of uh, power versus launch mass in metric tons launched. SLS is 70 uh, tons to LEO, um, and SLS Block 2 is about 130 tons to LEO. Impactor comparison. We, we compared the impactors as well as to uh, IBD. Uh, the basic uh, takeaway is this approach actually works um, as good or, or better than, in many cases, an impactor of equivalent launch mass, and it's certainly much more flexible. You can also de-spin an asteroid with this, um, and has uh, much more flexibility in many cases. This is a one giganewton second impulse for comparison. Again, this is covered in our papers in a lot more detail. I won't do this. Okay, this is a simulation. This is the PDC threat, uh, taken out with four years before impact. Um, with a 12 Newton, that's about 100 to 200 kilowatt class system. You'll see the interdiction here happening, starts at four years, and then you'll see it uh, impact in just a moment, and then miss with these miss. Uh, so 45 Earth radii miss for 100 meter, five Earth radii for 200 meter, 1.3 for um, 300 meter. And that's for a very modest system. Ion beam deflection, ion beam deflectors need um, huge amounts of uh, xenon to uh, do the deflection. Um, so this compares much more favorably for a fixed launch mass. One thing I'd say is that I think it is actually quite ridiculous to um, have planetary defense not pre-deployed. Uh, you would never build a, a defense system for a terrestrial threat um, after the uh, ICA boom was launched at you. That would just be um, ludicrous. So I'm going to turn it over because uh, this will be solved not by me, but by the next generation. Travis, one of our students, is going to talk about the laboratory measurements. Um, so I, I do my work on laboratory measurements of directed energy deflection, and which uh, laser ablation. And so we have. Uh, in our laboratory, we use a basalt sample that is similar in composition to known asteroids um, with a 40-watt ablation laser. And in our laboratory setup, we use a vacuum chamber to simulate a space environment with a turbo uh, vacuum pump. And during the ablation process, the torsion balance rotates in a horizontal plane, and we then measure the torque caused by laser ablation with a secondary laser that reflects off a mirror which is, fixed to a tor which is fixed to our torsion balance. And that reflection goes into a laser centroid detector um, as is shown in, on the left in our CAD drawing. And we also have a, a real picture of our vacuum chamber and our sample and the, the, the measurement laser. And so we, we, uh, we measure thrust versus chamber pressure. Um, because the ablation rate is high enough that the turbo pump is saturated. Um, with our lowest pressure to date at approximately one millitor, we get 360 micro newtons of thrust, um, as shown on the left uh, graph, um, and a lower limit momentum coupling coefficient of about 45 micro newtons per watt absorbed by the sample. Um, our laser material mo models give a thrust of about 100 micro newtons per watt optical, 
and we have derated this to 60 micronewtons per watt optical um, to be on the conservative side. And so I would like to show you a video I made of my laser ablation process that was filmed in uh, 60 frames per second at 1080p resolution. So this is a very unique clip because we can see the plume cloud being diffracted by the laser and we also see sparks coming off. But the plume cloud is very unique in that picture. Um, we also see the laser visible in purple with some sparks in this clip. Um, and we see the very bright spot of the laser on the, on the basalt sample. And so if we look closely here, we also see a plume cloud. We see that bubble almost. And that's very unique. And it just shows the unique environment at the surface of the sample. And so here, uh, this is a filmed in a lower exposure. And we can see the, this is like, we would still be seeing the plume cloud if I was doing a higher exposure. But um, this is just to show the bubbling with the ejection plume here. Um, this clip is rather long, so it'll go to a bubbling clip soon. You can see these bubbles happening at the, at the surface. And so here's our, our final clip, and we see uh, the process of ablation occurring. Uh, this is actually filmed at 60 frames per second, so this is real time. So yeah, that's the video. Thank you. And I'll turn it over to uh, Phil. Just a couple more slides here, we'll finish off. Um, okay, so for conclusions, um, so direct energy is actually quite practical. Um, it's come a long ways and it's going very rapidly. Uh, the uh, ascent phase for this is extraordinarily quick, uh, driven off so obviously by other needs. Uh, and such a system has a lot of long-term consequences. And one thing you can do with it while it's uh, waiting for a threat to come in is do something useful like uh, deorbit debris. Um, it's quite a large team, mostly young people, and they really enjoy uh, blowing up everything they can. It's the one thing you can do. Um, since we uh, live near the ocean, we also have lots of meetings, um, not necessarily in the lab. I'll leave you with this, and then uh, we'll end and take some questions. 